it's official folks i am an xbox youtuber but beyond that it's official folks xbox is dying but kind of thriving and that makes absolutely no sense because those are kind of polar opposite things now if you look at other xbox content creators on the platform i know colt eastwood recently made a video talking about xbox hardware in 2026 I don't really know why, and I can't really hate on the video because it did absolute numbers, but I don't think Cold Eastwood actually likes me. But I'm not really concerned about 2026 for any company at this point in time. I'm concerned about 2024. And we had a recent report come out about Xbox that paints a grim but kind of interesting picture. Consoles are indeed dying for them, but they're still kind of thriving in some other areas. So I want to go over all this stuff and really just try to make some sense of, into it. But before we get into all that good stuff, I want to give a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, Keeper, especially for letting me sing Uncle Luke in this ad. Trying to remember every password that I have is an absolute nightmare, but that's where today's video sponsor comes into play, Keeper Security. Keeper makes it totally easy to create and store your passwords in a secure personal password manager that you can access anywhere on any type of device. That means if you're at the pool, by the beach, or sitting in your house listening to your favorite songs. Don't stop. Pop that. Let me see the doo-doo brown. I want to rock. 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 You will have the peace of mind knowing that your passwords and accounts are secure. You use Keeper's built-in password generator to create and store unique passwords. You store your passwords in your encrypted vault, and then you use Keeper Fill to automatically fill your credentials on any device the next time you use that to log into your account. And Keeper just doesn't store its passwords. You can do credit cards, passport information, notes, whatever you need to put in those files. Your data is protected with military-grade encryption and accessible on any device, from your phone to your tablet or desktop. Make your life easier with Keeper, because everyone hates remembering all these passwords. You can get it half off today if you use code RGT50 at checkout. And if you just kind of want to try it out and see if it's right for you, Keeper does offer a 30-day free trial as well. They have over 300,000 five-star reviews in the app stores, so make sure you click the link in the description box to learn more about Keeper. Keep your passwords safe, keep your sanity, and a huge thank you to Keeper Security for sponsoring today's video. So obviously Xbox has been struggling with their hardware ever really since like the Xbox 360. The Xbox One didn't exactly light the world on fire. It never caught up to the PlayStation 4. And we're kind of seeing something similar with the Xbox Series platform versus the PlayStation 5. Now, of course, Xbox does things a lot differently than PlayStation does, putting their exclusive games onto other platforms, although... You know, I feel like that was kind of overhyped as well. They haven't put Starfield on other platforms like was originally rumored, supposed to be coming out on PlayStation 5 by the end of the year. That's obviously not happening. But things like Game Pass, putting a strong emphasis on Game Pass, but still trying to bolster their lineup by acquiring other companies has kind of been the mantra of Xbox. Well, we had some recent sales numbers come out for Xbox as a division, Xbox hardware as well. And it's a very yin and yang situation. It's very polar opposite when you actually look at how things are going because re really they're not going great. So this was a synopsis done by Reset Era. Look, I tried to go to some of these websites to read the article themselves. You literally can't view a website anymore. Like there's so many freaking advertisements. Like I get it, gaming journalism is dying even though a lot of you like to act like it's not. That's why you're littering your site with ads. But you have to have a somewhat readable experience for people to wanna read. But shout outs to Big Crev over on Reset Era for putting the synopsis of this so that we can read it. So, Xbox had 64.7 billion in revenue and a net of 22 billion, up 15 and 10% respectively. We're talking about quarter four of the year, the fiscal year for Xbox's sales. On the gaming side, revenue was up 44%, thriving. But with the 48% of the growth coming from Activision Blizzard, meaning that they would be down in revenue without them. So when you're talking about things like that, obviously 
we're really just talking about Call of Duty. Call of Duty is a behemoth. People buy these battle passes. They buy the skins. They, they put money into this game well beyond just the initial launch. And I know Call of Duty is kind of a joke for a lot of people. It's kind of the butt end of a joke. But it's still a decent game. Like, you could still have fun with Call of Duty. And this kind of goes to show you that Call of Duty is still a very strong IP. There's a new Call of Duty coming out as well that will be included into Game Pass, although they are restructuring the Game Pass prices because of Call of Duty and giving you additional content and making all these stupid tiers. And now there's rumors about other tiers coming in. It's a very confusing situation, especially if you are, you know, more of a casual consumer who's just looking to play some Call of Duty and not wanting to spend the $70 on it. So, According to the write-up here, Xbox content and services revenue, which includes Xbox Game Pass, is up 61% this quarter. Activision Blizzard revenues have once again contributed to the majority of revenue here, with 58 points of net impact. Without Activision Blizzard revenues, Xbox content and services revenue will still have been up 3% year over year. So you see that 61% and you're like, wow! And then you just realize it's pretty much just Call of Duty. It's not necessarily Xbox, but that does play into the fact that Xbox did acquire Activision Blizzard, which at the end of the day seems to be a decision that is paying off. I don't think anyone was kind of thinking that that wasn't going to be a smart decision. Obviously it is. That's going to generate revenue for Xbox and probably keep shareholders somewhat happy unless they kind of look at the fine details of the situation. Because when you go kind of beyond just the surface level, well, that's where we start to get this very, very negative image here. While there's a lot of anticipation for new games on Xbox Game Pass, console sales are still struggling. That's an understatement. Xbox hardware revenue is down a massive 42% this quarter. Now, you might remember earlier this year, we learned that Xbox hardware sales were down 47% in Europe year over year. So they're obviously coming to a bit of a stagnation with hardware sales. And that's not necessarily what you want to hear, especially when you acquire something like Activision Blizzard. You're trying to get people into Game Pass on a console, but are you really? Like it goes on to say here, Microsoft is planning to launch a diskless Xbox Series X console in a white later this year, alongside with a new black, a Galaxy Black Special Edition Xbox Series X. So you obviously still care about consoles because you're still making consoles. You could just probably sit on the inventory that you have of standard Xbox Series X and Series X systems and just coast for the rest of this console generation. But you want people to buy your console, yet you're also like, hey, here's this little dongle that you can attach to your, your TV and now you're good to go. Teaming up with Amazon, it's all cloud gaming stuff. Like, I get it, you kind of have to try to do something different, but when you're down 42% for the quarter that doesn't necessarily paint like a great picture it doesn't paint a great picture for future hardware because an investor is going to see this report and be like well wait a minute if we got rid of the the, the xbox console and we just did the streaming device which costs absolutely nothing to make we just focused on the streaming stuff and focused on putting games on other platforms we would have even more money so why are we why are we messing around with this console when it's going down year over year a huge drop of 42% and it's not like this is the end of the console generation for Xbox. This isn't a Nintendo Switch situation where you look at the you know you look at it is down year over year. Okay, people are expecting the new system in 2025. You've already said, you know, something's going to happen with it. So that's what kind of all eyes are focused on. You had 7 plus years of a great run with your system. You can't say that about Xbox because you haven't had a great run since what? The Xbox 360 and you just took that storefront down. Despite the poor Xbox hardware revenue, gaming revenue at, X at Microsoft is up 44% overall, helped by the additional Activision Blizzard revenue. In fact, the revenue added 48 points. So overall gaming revenue at Microsoft would have been down 4% if the company hadn't acquired Activision Blizzard. So without Activision Blizzard, the company's gaming division is down. The hardware is already down, but the gaming division would be down too overall 
if it wasn't for Act Activision Blizzard. So it's, it, you know, when you look at the title of this video, Xbox is dying because Xbox is not what's pushing Xbox revenue to go up. It's Activision Blizzard. Now, yes, that is a part of Activision, but the consoles, I feel at this point, are, are genuinely hindering Xbox a little bit. And I don't want that to be the case. Let me make that perfectly clear. I want competition in the console gaming sphere. I wish that it was the mid 90s where everyone and their mother was making consoles and handhelds and stuff like that. The Jaguar, the 3DO, the PlayStation 1, the Sega Saturn, the, the N64, the, the tail end of the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo and all these other crazy systems, attachments and add-ons and all these companies coming out of the woodwork to make consoles because I felt like or I feel like that was the best time for innovation that was the best time for companies to push each other harder to have technology go farther whereas now we're in this lull state where it's PlayStation and Xbox for the power war and the Nintendo is kind of like the weird kid in the corner eating their boogers but they're still very successful that booger eating is definitely paying off but when there's a such a sharp decline year over year in an area where you should be thriving you know we're four years into the system nearly you should be thriving you should be hitting your stride you should be hitting your golden era of the system but it's down substantially and yes it'll probably tick up a little bit when call of duty is put into game pass as far as the new call of duty is concerned but is it going to be able to counteract all these other instances of xbox hardware being down because software is not the problem right now as crazy as that is to say software is probably the least of their worries they got indiana jones they have avowed you know put up indiana jones and avowed next to astrobot and concord i'm taking indiana jones and avowed now astrobot will probably be the best game out of those four but concord is so low on my priority list that that completely counteracts it i would rather have two very enjoyable solid games than just one great game and one crappy game that i'm not gonna play so like you know it, it's such a weird position right now and it will probably get a little bit better on the hardware side of things but is it going to be able to counteract this this major decline because xbox consoles are dying but they're still kind of thriving and it's just it, it's very bizarre it is very bizarre i don't know and this is probably why the company is in such peril this is probably why the company constantly seems to be shifting their ideology and shifting their their core vision and what they want to do you know play on xbox it's great but you don't have to play on xbox you can play on something else you want to play on your pc you got to get game pass it's great but if you want to buy our games too you know you could go ahead and do that you know we're just putting a few games on other platforms but we might put more i really feel like that's why this situation is the way it is i don't know though i don't know i i really don't know how this is all going to turn out or play out because I feel like unprecedented times you know this is an unprecedented time in the video game industry we're also seeing you know sort of a crash studios shutting down gaming journalists and websites shutting down as well it's a transitional phase for the video game industry as far as where it's going to be in five years so that's when I see Cole Eastwood's 2026 vid and I'm like bro we got to talk about the now. We, we got to talk about the now. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments section down below what you think about this. Is this good news for Xbox? Is it bad news? Is, is it both? Because I, I really think it's both. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. And huge thank you to today's video sponsor, Keeper. Thank you for letting me sing Uncle Luke in an ad. That is a lifelong dream of mine that I have now fulfilled. Be sure to check them out by clicking the link in the description box or in the pinned comment down below. Keep your passwords nice and safe and remember where they are. And as always, guys, give me your feedback in the comment section down below. Hit subscribe if you're new. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.